attacked by another tribe. And so many of their members, including children, were taken as captives and then they were sold off as slaves. At the famous market of the Arab world called Sukhurukta, they had recently revived that centuries old market. It was a huge market known in the entire Arab world, known as the Souk of Rukka. So they was brought as a slave and then he was sold off in that market. And the person who bought it was none other than Hakim bin Hizam. And he was the nephew of the beloved wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ummul Mu'mineen Sayyida Khadija radiallahu anha. So after having purchased this boy, Zayd, Hakim bin Hizam decided to give this child to his aunt Khadija radiallahu anha. So he remained in the care and in the ownership of Khadija radiallahu anha. This is before he married the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and after she married the Prophet ﷺ, she gifted Zayd to the Prophet ﷺ. So then Zayd came under the care of the Prophet ﷺ. After Islam, the people of this tribe, the father of Zayd, Harika, he learned about the whereabouts. Because in those days, it was very difficult to track where a person has been taken and where the person may have been sold. Just like the case of Yusuf he was taken from Qur'an and he was sold in the markets of Egypt. So when his father found out that his son is alive, his father remained in sadness and grief over the loss of his beloved son Zayd. So once he found out that his son is in Makkah, in the care of someone named Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi That's all he knew. So he took his brother, which was the uncle of Zayd, and they decided to go to Makkah. They found out where the Prophet Sallallahu was living, where the leader of the was living. They reached the home of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they finally got to see their separated son, Zayd. So, Haritha, went up to the Prophet Sallallahu and he said, I have been missing my son so much and I'm here to take him back to my family, take him back to his home, take him back to my tribe. And I'm willing to offer whatever amount you want as ransom, as price for him. The Prophet Sallallahu said, I won't even take a dime. I won't take anything for this boy. But ask him, if he wants to go with you, take him. If he doesn't want to go with you, I won't let him go against his will. So the uncle and the father both went to Zayd and Haritha and they said, we are here to take you home. Please, let's go home. So Zayd with Haritha, he said to his father, look my dear father, I miss you too, but you are just my father. And he is just my uncle. And you both are individuals. And in this person, talking to the Prophet Wasallam, he said, I have both. I have my father in him, and I, I have my uncle with, in him. And I will never leave him, no matter how much you insist. So the Prophet Wasallam, he said, this is his choice. He's not going. You know what moved this boy who was a slave? who was turned into a slave to live with the Prophet ﷺ and to the extent that this boy said La aftaru alayka ahada He said to the Prophet ﷺ, O oh Prophet of Allah I will never give preference to anyone over me I will live with you even if I have to live hungry but I will live with you over living in a palace or in a mansion You know what did that? It was the exemplary character of the Prophet ﷺ it was a sublime character of the Prophet ﷺ, about which Allah says, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And you are certainly on the highest pedestal of the character, the excellent character. 
it was the character of the Prophet ﷺ that influenced so many people to come into Islam, to be moved by Islam, to be moved by the teachings of Islam. And let me say this to you. Most non-Muslims will never read Quran. Likewise, most Arabs did not read Quran. And most non-Muslims will never read the hadith, a book of hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa But they will certainly read one book. And that is you, a Muslim. They will read the Muslim that's living, how you live, and whether the religion has changed you, whether the teachings of religion are reflected in you, in your character or not, this is going to change people. Even today, this is what changing people. If someone comes into Islam, it's not always just by reading Quran or by reading the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa They rather look at a living example and thereby they say, they say that this is the religion that I want to be in. This is the religion that I want to be part of. So try to, to, try to excel in your character in emulating the character of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One second. So now I'm on. I can see that I'm not doing this for the time. Now I was just looking.